Welcome back to another day on the bus build. Over the last few days, we've been doing a bit of prep work. We pulled the AC unit out. Oh yeah, we've got a couple. So many hoses and wires. Everything's ripped out. All we gotta do now is tie off all the loose ends, tie off all the loose wires. <laughs> it's like the perfect, perfect background. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tired. We also started gutting some of the electrical and getting all that prepped, and then uh, started running back the coolant lines underneath of the school bus. Why are you always under the bus, Mike? I don't know. I'm always under the bus. I'm trying to figure out if I want to leave the coolant lines to the rear heater in. So I'm wondering if I should just U off the line and leave out, leave the extra, so then it's kind of like a reserve coolant area, or if I should trace them all the way back into the engine and then just U them off and then disconnect the entire system. That's sure. just an excuse. I think you just like to be under buses. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but today, today is the day where the bus doesn't start because I pulled out one of the safety systems on the engine and uh, my dad's here and his entire job of the day to help me with is to go through the electrical system, continuity test everything, get rid of all the old wires that don't matter anymore that are just shorting out because right about now, the bus batteries just like die pretty quickly because there's something draining the power out. So we gotta find where that short is and uh, dead it off. But this guy right here, if you don't know, he helped me build the green bus. This bus, whoop, that bus right there, that was the first thing I ever built and it's all thanks to him So he's coming back around on the second bus build to help me and uh, get this all situated. So thanks dad for that. But I think it's about time we get tying into this electrical and get moving because we got spray foam in like a week and a half. And there's also like a million flies. I don't know if you could see them. We're, we're in uh, what we call black fly season and uh, they're, just, they're just flying around everywhere. But we're gonna get on this, here we go. Side of fears are done. All the good times just begun. How goes it, Edison? That looks like fun. It is a lot of fun. It's pretty much like let's try to take everything out, but the brakes, turns, reverse, and basic engine mechanical. But uh, pretty much the rest of this is just gonna go away. We've already cut out a whole bunch. Like a hundred feet. Oh, at least. There's still more to go. A lot more to go, but it'll be fun when it's done. Even in the hard times, you and I can weather any. So we're just about to pull the panel apart, and my dad is taking kind of his first look. I did already do a bit of like cutting and wiring. We took out some of the emergency stuff already, but uh, this guy, he wants to try to eliminate a good bit, and. Uh, so we're gonna start testing through this. He's thinking that this right here is all kind of AC stuff because I already ripped out some wires here from the AC. So we're gonna test through this and see if these wires are going where we think they go. Um, it, it's kind of hard with a lot of these buses because I, I know you can get electrical schematics. Sometimes you can find them online by just Googling it. Sometimes you gotta contact the company. If you can, I suggest trying to find a schematic for your specific school bus if you're trying to take away some wires because it's gonna be way easier when it's all labeled out and you can just read through what wire numbers are what. And look, bugs. Oh. <laughs> black, black fly season. Black fly season. Whew. I, I really, I feel like we should like try to get like a micro camera and got one. So what are we looking to do here? Well, we're gonna just, right now we're just gonna figure out exactly what these wires do. Like Mike said, I think it's the AC unit. And then we're just gonna go through all these wires in here, figure out which ones we don't need even though some of them are cut. Thankfully they label them really well. And this is uh, left rear red. Right there, left, Ooh. rear, red. Wait, it's gotta focus. Focus! There we go. Oh, almost. Maybe we'll get it like this. There we go. Left, rear, red. So this is this is most likely for the red uh, warning lights that were in the left rear of the bus. That's the uh, that's the charge of the day. 
<laughs> and these bugs are unbelievable. Well, he also, uh, once we kind of get into this, he's going to uh, be showing us how to do some continuity testing, how to use a voltmeter and things like that, because this guy right here, uh, is, uh, he works for an electrical utility. He's uh, an engineer, and uh, this is, if anyone's wondering how I learn a bunch of things, it's people like this. Uh, people like my father, people like his friends, uh, just, yeah, badge. People who just have the knowledge and skills to do these types of things, and if you have someone like this in your life, um, if you have a friend, a neighbor, just take the opportunity to learn from them, uh, soak in all the knowledge that you can, and uh, then, you know, maybe share it on YouTube with others. So, there's a lot of wires, and there's a lot of colors. And a lot of bugs. And a lot of bugs. So this is the Vandalock system, wires number 36 and 37. So these went to the rear latch on the door. So I want to test to see if they have 12 volts DC on them. So I'll just stick the tester in there. And we just remember on a bus, the chassis is ground. So I can touch anything here for ground. And if you see it, Wait. so this has voltage on it. You see 12 volts right now. Now this is the other side. So when the switch closes, it would put voltage on here. And right now you're going to see it has no voltage. And the idea would be that you connect these two wires. I should be able to turn the key and start the engine. This is like round two of like taking guesses in the dark. You ready, Dad? Go for it. What? Okay. So the batteries are pretty much dead right now. So it would have turned over. But can we all just say this guy's a genius? It literally like... He just, he's been here for like two minutes and he's like, oh yeah, we're just gonna put these two wires together and the bus is gonna start. How I learn a bunch of things, it's people like this. Uh, people like my father, people like his friends. Uh, just, yeah, badge. All right, dad, thanks. Now, uh, I can go? no, you can't go. Can we figure this out now? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got that figured out. So let's just deadhead it down here a little further. All right, now that we got that system started, the plan now is we got to start pulling this guy out. Um, we don't really need this switch anymore. This is the master switch for the emergency kids. This is the dome lights, which we're getting rid of because we're going to be putting a solar system in to run our own lighting. And then the rear heater, which we pulled out, so we don't need that anymore either. So this entire thing can disappear. So we're going to get that. But the problem is all those wires go underneath the seat. So now I got to pull the seat out. Whew. I feel like we just keep gutting this bus more and more. Eventually we're just going to end up with a metal shell. And, uh, then we're gonna put it back together. So yeah, we're really getting into this thing. Bottom, you just tilt it up the gear wire, and then right there. That's for the seat sensor. Yep, hold straight up. There you go. Yep. All right, so there's a little tip for some of you out there. This might be like, oh yeah, of course. But when you take the seat bolts off, or when you do when you do anything with bolts, if you can, put them back on the threads. You want to do this for two reasons. One, so that if for some reason we step on these threads or we hit these threads, we're not going to break the thread, and then we'll never get the bolt back on. So putting the bolt back on is going to protect the threads. Also, we won't lose the bolts. The nuts. The nuts. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Dad. All right, all the bolts are back on. What's the next game plan? Nuts. 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 Right, you're right. Nuts. Nuts. What's the next thing? Those wires. Figure out where they go. Wires. This whole big thing of wires. Uh -huh. uh, looks like we're going to be cutting the floor mat. Which means we're putting a new one in. Oh, boy. Here we go. Ta-da! You're really uh, getting into this whole thing, but we're just going one by one. So we had the little foot pedal that controlled essentially so that the bus driver can press that button and then all the lights and flashers come on for the kids. So we said, all right, let's take that out. We're just starting there. We know we got these two wires. We're just tracing them back. And then once we dead end that system, we'll pick something else and move on and see where we end up from there. But just one thing at a time, keep it simple, stupid, and uh, just keep moving forward. All right, we're figuring out the AC wires since we're almost done decommissioning that system. But I wanted to show you really quick what my dad's doing while I'm pulling those wires out. What he's doing is he's using this voltmeter and uh, 
He's got it set on continuity testing, which you can definitely Google it of how to do this. There's probably tons of articles on the internet about it. Maybe I'll write one pretty soon, uh, put one up. But essentially, if you can see the numbers, right now it's reading zero. It means that they're connected. If he lets go of them, it's gonna go back to that. So he knows then that if he's touching two wires in a separate part of the bus, if it reads zero, he knows that he's on the same loop essentially. Um, so we can test it. So what he's doing is he's holding one up here and then he's taking the other one and he's touching it down there. Now, in that case, if that meter says zero, he knows that what he's touching on the top is the same as what he's touching on the bottom. Now, obviously in this case, he's got kind of the distance he can reach. If you don't have the distance, grab a second wire and use a jumper wire and then connect it to that uh, black wire. You can connect it to the side of the bus. You can run a really long into whatever location you need. But essentially the, the idea here is we're just trying to figure out what circuits go to what what's connected to what, and then we can move forward from there once we start really understanding the system and how it was wired. But can you just look at all this? Like, we just got everything ripped apart. <laughs> okay, so my dad's in the front of the bus and we've got these two wires and he's got two wires in the front. Now, I will quickly say that we know that these wires are the same already because I already tested them, but I want to redo it and show you how we did it. So we need to know if these two are the same. We can't find the labels, but we're pretty sure they are. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take these two wires. I'm going to take my meter. Well, we'll try to, whoop, there we go. You guys can, see, everyone can see it. We're going to put the meter right there. And where's the other one? There it is. Okay, so I got these two wires. My dad wants to know if these are the same. He's in the front currently touching them together. So we're gonna touch this one, and then we're gonna touch this one. And then when my dad takes the same two wires that we think are the same, he's gonna touch them, and that number should go to zero if they are the same, which if I had a better connection here, they would. All right, dad, you're good. All right, so now we can see that I'm touching both of these. The wires are zero. If I disconnect, it goes back to nothing. And pretty much what that's telling us is that we know what these wires are, we don't need them, and we're gonna rip them out. All right, Dad, you wanna give us an update? Well, so far, so good. I so, mean, we're going wire by wire, and basically this thing is you know, completely worthless, but we just gotta make sure that the wires that leave here don't go to a junction somewhere. So I was very careful when I cut them to make sure that the labels remained up on that panel up there, so in case we had to put them back together, we could. So if you look up here, uh, I can show a before and after photo when we're all done, but essentially this is completely gone now, this is completely gone now, this is completely gone now, and now we're working on this right here. But it looks like almost everything besides these four we're actually gonna completely get rid of. And these are separate relays of the entire circuit board. So it might be entirely possible that we might be taking this whole thing out and moving these relays. And that gives us the opportunity to possibly put a cabinet up here or something, which would be kind of cool, honestly. But before we get to the cabinet and all that kind of stuff, I've got to figure out all these wires and all of these wires and these wires and these wires. <laughs> it's going to be a whole day of just wiring. We're going to have this thing nice and clean by the end of the day. Right? Yep. Okay, good. <laughs> That's the goal. Side by side, our fears are done. Oh, the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have. Let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy, but things are finally right. One thing we're doing is, I got most of the wires in that bag right there, but what I'm starting to do is actually organizing them. I'm tying them all up into kind of little sections of long lengths. Reason is, is, is two reasons. One, there's a lot of wire here. There's really no point to just throw this in a landfill. We might as well tie it up and save it for other projects, future projects, if it's a bus or not. I mean, the wires are still good wires. They're 10, 14 gauge. So we're kind of going through, we're saving all of it, organizing it. Whatever we can't save, you know, little stuff, yeah, we're gonna have to, you know, get rid of those, but, you know, try to save what you can because if you don't wanna spend, you know, 30, 40, hundreds of dollars, who knows how much wire you're gonna buy, but, you know, 500 feet of 14 THHN isn't cheap at Home Depot, and uh, that right there is already bought. So, you know, if you're trying to save a little money, you're trying to reuse the wires, those wires are perfectly good, so consider keeping them. 
The front of the bus at this point is almost as far as we're gonna end up going. So now what we have to do is we have to take all of these wires, which obviously you can't read them, but they're the brake, the reverse, the you know turn signals, things like that. But in this bus, um, all of the flasher kid stuff, so like when the, the bus driver would like flip the switch and all the lights would flash, that's these. Um, we already got rid of them, but they're double wired into the bottom so that when you hit the turn signal, it turns on the turn, but then when you flip the emergency thing for the kids, it also flashes. So what we have to do is kind of unwire the brakes and the turns and stuff, and then get rid of the wires that come from all of the, you know, kids stuff. And then we need to rewire direct wires from these so that now they're only turns and brakes and they don't also have all these extra, you know, jumping wires going into them. So that's gonna be the task in the back of the, ugh, can't even speak. That's gonna be the task in the back of the bus at this point. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're almost there. There's so many more wires. We just keep getting rid of more wires. Where are they? There they are. Look at all of them. That's yeah, legal. All right, Dad. The idea here is that he's in the back testing the voltage on the brakes and the turns and stuff. And I'm, of course, in the front. So I'm going to turn the key, start playing with the buttons. And we're going to start testing through the voltages to make sure that we have everything in the right place and it's all still working. Ready? Yeah. Which one you want, brake? I'm on them. All right, the little lights still work. All right, turn them off. Turn the key off. All right, so what, what's the verdict? We don't know yet. We don't know yet. That's a pretty good verdict. I mean, it's better than a bad one. I'll take a maybe. At this point, we have the entire engine bay all the wires are pulled back to their terminations so we are completely done and here's the really exciting part i am i'm super excited about this this entire thing is disconnected so i can actually disconnect this entire circuit board and this entire upper area just became available for either a cabinet i can just face it or do whatever but pretty much i'm going to be taking that thing out and that's pretty much the last thing of the day super thrilled about that and uh then all we got to do is hook back up the brake lines the, uh, the backup camera, the reverse turn signals and things like that, and we're on our way. So this was a huge relief to get through this step because this is definitely something that was gonna stall us up if we didn't get it done to move forward to spray foam and framing. But now that this done, we're gonna start flying. This is that really exciting part that I've been waiting for all day. Oh my gosh. That is such a good feeling. Look at that space. Okay, so if you look at this thing, completely gone, which means uh, pretty much we can throw it out, get rid of it, maybe I'll call up some places and see if they want it, but that pretty much wraps up the day completely. And if we get back in the bus, show you what exactly is uh, going on. As you can see now, the entire space is wide open. We got rid of all the wires. All the wires that used to be coming down here are completely gone. All that we have left are these wires, which are brake, turn, reverse, so on and so forth. And then we have these wires, which are ignition switch wires, which come off of the key. And we're gonna leave those because I might actually keep those for like a backup camera so that when I turn the key, a backup camera turns on or things like that, because it's already pre-wired up there. So I think I'm gonna leave that and possibly reuse it later. But dad, I think we did good. We did fantastic. I have to say, uh, thank you to dad. Uh, many of you possibly, if you saw me build the green bus a couple years ago, uh, he was super instrumental in helping me out, learning everything and kind of getting the uh, the start to what I'm doing now. So thanks for that and thanks for coming back on the bus build because now we're doing the short bus and uh, you know I called in the reinforcements and man did we get this done quick and we got it done in one day. One so day. now I think the next steps are going to be you know tying up some of the electrical, moving on for framing, getting some metal work done and then we got about a week and a half till spray foam so we have to, we have to start moving. So he's going to be heading out but thanks for your help and... You know, thanks everyone else for watching and we'll see you next time. Time to uh, head out to the fire and make some food. Oh yeah. Luke's got a fire going over there and we're gonna go hang out. Um, we know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy, but things are finally right. With you and I, the future is bright.